Ladies and gentlemen, what is William Ruto's game plan for 2027? Because I've been observing William Ruto's moves, political moves of late. And they're totally different from his game plan in 2022. William Ruto's political strategy for 2022 was straightforward. Ikuyu votes plus the Kalenjin votes, tarani of numbers, and then focus on Raleigh Odinga strongholds. Although he did not really succeed in some of Raleigh Odinga strongholds, which he was targeting like Akamega, like uh, Mombasa, but that was his strategy. I'm 100% convinced that William Ruto's strategy this time round is not the Kikuyu and Kalenjin strategy. William Ruto is planning to go beyond that. Probably it's informed by the possibility of Raila Muludinga not on the ballot. Because as long as Raila Muludinga is not on the ballot, William Ruto cannot bank on the support of the mountain. And probably William Ruto being the president of the Republic of Kenya has all this intelligence. And today while speaking in Homabe, William Ruto kind of leaked Raila Odinga's plan to support Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. I want you to take one minute and 20 seconds to listen to this part where Raila Odinga, I mean, where William Ruto is speaking. And let me know if he's not revealing Raila Odinga's plan to support Kalonzo Musioka. Uyu wanga anazinda kiniambia ati sisi ni watu ya baba. Sio ni sawa? Yeah. Si hata mimi nilikuwa muti ya baba? Yeah. Ama? Yeah. Kwani muti ya baba ya saa hii na muti ya baba ya zamani si ni the same? Yeah. Ama namna gani? Yeah. Na mimi nauliza nyinyi. Yeah. Mimi nauliza nyinyi. Yeah. Ndio Raila aitwe prime minister leo. Yeah. Nani alichangia hiyo kazi? Yeah. Si ni mimi. Mimi ni waulize tena. Siku ile sisi wote tulikuwa tunasaidia kwambo. Si tulikuwa tunatafuta kiti ya rais. Sisi wote. Sasa mimi nauliza nyinyi kwa hii uchaguzi ilikuwa imepita. Watu wakushindana kwa hiyo kiti walikuwa wangapi? Si ni mimi na kwambo. Tulipata hatukupata. Sasa shida iko wapi? Shida iko wapi? Si tu, si tu li... Si tulikuwa tunataputa kiti ya rais na tumepata sasa tuungane tupeleke Kenya yetu mbele si ndio ile tu deni bado mimi niko naye na nitauliza agwambo unajua mimi nimepigia kura agwambo na agwambo hajawahi kunipigia kura sasa namngojea 2027 kwa sababu sasa kama yeye is not running si mimi nitashindana na Kalonzo huyu Kalonzo kweli mkiniona mkiona na <laughs> uh. Now, that is William Ruto. And the statement is very clear. And I want us to go back to certain developments which took place in Kenya Kwanza ahead of the 2022 general election. Because those developments are actually shaping William Ruto's current political strategy. For those who followed Kenya Kwanza politics, on the day Musele Mdavadi officially announced that he was joining William Ruto's camp, that was uh, the earthquake, they said something which most people did not really take serious. That on Musele Mdavadi's side, only two people, apart from Mdavadi and Ruto, only two other people knew about the negotiations that were actually ongoing between Ruto and Budavadi. Those two individuals were number one, Johnson Sakaja, number two, Cleophas Malala. Now let us look at Sakaja. Who is Sakaja today? Johnson Sakaja, as we speak, is the governor for Nairobi. Do you think William Ruto just woke up from, from his sleep and decided that in Nairobi, I'm going to appoint Sakaja as the UD candidate. Because for Nairobi, it would have been easy for Akikuyu to win on UDA.
But Ruto decided against all odds to have Sakaja who help him negotiate with Musa Madavari. For me, I'm nowadays trying to understand why Ruto settled on Sakaja in Nairobi. The idea was to lock Brigadi Gashagwa and the Kikuyu voting bloc from controlling Nairobi. You can imagine if Brigadi Gashagwa was the one controlling Nairobi because of the governor of Nairobi. And that can explain why Sakaja and Brigadi Gashagwa are talking different language. Then now let us go to the second person who was Clofas Malala. Malala was supposed to be the governor for Kakamega. He failed in that bid. But William Ruto then made Clofas Malala as the Secretary General of UDA Party. Which means Malala is currently the engine of UDA Party. He understands now the operation of UDA Party. If you were to give Malala one vote and you place Rigad here, Mudavadi here, and tell him to cast his vote. Who do you think he is going to vote for? Mudavadi. And of course, during on that particular day, Mudavadi was the main guy. And if you've been studying William Ruto the way he's been promoting Musalia Mudavadi, it means William Ruto has a totally different strategy. So which means for William Ruto, his strategy for 2027 is basically Kalonzo Musioka versus William Ruto, which takes us to the running mate of Ruto in 2027. I'm now a bit convinced that there's high chance that Ruto can actually nominate Muslim Ravadi as his running mate in 2027. I'm saying this because William Ruto appointed Muslim Ravadi as the the prime cabinet secretary without portfolio. He added him more work, morals, which is doing. And just the other day, he appointed Musalim Ravadi as the cabinet secretary for foreign affairs. First of all, why do you think he appointed him the cabinet secretary for foreign affairs? The main reason why he did that is that William Ruto wanted Musalim Ravadi to actually sit in the National Security Council of the Republic of Kenya. According to our constitution, let me just make a reference. According to our constitution, let me just make reference. Article 240 of the Constitution of Kenya says that there is an established National Security Council. The council consists of the president, the deputy president, the cabinet secretary responsible for defense, that is Duale, the cabinet secretary responsible for foreign affairs, Duale Nimutu Aruto, the cabinet secretary responsible for foreign affairs, of course, Alfred Mutua negotiated this, but now we have Musalem Dabadi. Which means by that appointment, Ruto has technically placed Musalem Dabadi right at the center of the Security Council. And then, of course, there is uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Internal Affairs, Internal Security, who is uh, Professor Keturi Kindiki. Kindiki, Duale, no Mudavadi. And of course, there is the Attorney General. There is, the, there is the Chief of Kenya Defense Forces, then there is the Director of the National Intelligence Service, then there is the Inspector General of the National Police Service. So technically he did that. And of course, yesterday I explained that of course by that, Mudavadi will now have more budget. Mudavadi will have the opportunity to meet more with diplomats. We'll be meeting uh, other people there. So for me, William Ruto's strategy for 2027 is informed by what he revealed today. Roto versus Muslim Davadi. And that can explain several things which we are witnessing within our political schemes. I mean, in, within our political environment. The first thing we are witnessing is the Mount Kenya political equation without Ray Ludinga. If Ray Ludinga is not in the equation in Mount Kenya, and let's say we have Mudavadi, we have Kalonzo, we have Ruto running, and even Riviji. I mean, what factors do you think can make someone from Mount Kenya to vote for Ruto and not Kalonzo? So the Mount Kenya 
political equation minus Raila Odinga is going to be complicated. Cannot be relied on. Because if there's Raila Odinga, then the community can be rallied around Raila Odinga or against Raila Odinga. That can explain why William Ruto is making those entry in Western, in the coast. Because Mount Kenya can slip a bit, he has a fallback. The other thing which you are witnessing currently is William Ruto's strategy to eat into Raila Odinga strongholds. Why do you think Ruto is now focusing more on Raila Odinga's strongholds? Because if the tyranny of numbers is working, why change it? It's because he understands that he needed to add certain votes, which in essence might not be there. If Raila Odinga is not there and Raila Odinga was the motivating factor why certain people in Mount, Ken Mount Kenya would actually wake up to vote. If Raila is not there, they'll not turn up to vote. So. He's figuring out how can I eat? Which takes us to the reason why he's doing that. Number three, according to our constitution, for one to be declared the president of the Republic of Kenya, that individual must actually get 50% plus one vote. Once you get that, then they go and look at the county, counties. And you must get 25% in more than half of the counties, which means out of this 47 counties, you must get 25% in 24 counties. It's normally a very tall order. If, for example, Mount Kenya were to leave Ruto today, then Azimio Lamoja One Kenya Alliance failed to deliver for him the 25.1. I mean, the 25% in 24 counties will not be able to get because Mount Kenya has those numbers. So if Mount Kenya will rebel against Ruto, and that's why if you paid close attention to what Ruto was trying to say in Homa Bay, is that in Homa Bay in the last election, he got 0.8% and that this time he wants it to move from that to 21% moving forward, which means William Ruto is thinking of having 25% in Nyanza so that it can compensate in uh, Mount Kenya. And of course, is with Mudavadi, he's also hoping that we'll gain 25% in uh, Western counties. And that's ex that explains the idea behind Musalia Mudavadi's 2027 running mate. Mudavadi is now a factor because of Mount Kenya because of lawyer nation, and of course because of railroading strongholds. If Mount Kenya will dump Ruto, Mdavadi is going to fix that in Western Kenya. I don't know what you think, that's my take. If you have enjoyed this video up to this stage, kindly let me know in the comments section, just by saying, Lee have enjoyed the video. Thank you guys, and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.